Hello fellow adventurers! This video is going to cover advanced techniques while playing as Astrologian as well as changes up to 3.07. There are plenty of beginner's guides. For the basics, please see Johnny's video. The link is in the description. The first part of this video will cover playing as Astrologian and the second part will cover changes up to 3.07. Depending on your duty, your group, and whether you're healing solo, with a white mage, scholar, or another astrologian, you will need to change your healing style. For maximum control of the group's healing potency, it is ideal to use Diurnal Sect. Unfortunately, it's not always optimal for you to be in Diurnal Sect. For instance, if you're healing with a white mage or another astrologian who is in Diurnal Sect. Speculation aside, Mathematically, an Astrologian has a higher potency of healing when in Diurnal Sect in regards to the respective expected spells. If you're healing in Nocturnal Sect, it's important to play the role as a support healer to your Regen Heavy counterpart. If you constantly spam your expected spells in Nocturnal Sect, you will find that in harder difficulty duties, you will run out of mana early in the fight. The one downside is, many white mages do not utilize their regen abilities like regen in Medica 2 as they should. Keeping the group's HP healthy is a healer's primary goal, but all three healing jobs can use Cleric Stance, and if mana and group's health permits, it's ideal to help increase the DPS. If both healers help DPS and it increases the group's total DPS by 10%, that's 10% less time spent on a pull and hypothetically less healing needed for the group. The key to playing Astrologian to maximize its potential is being able to buff while you're healing. Every 30 seconds you should be setting up a player or the group with a buff. Practice always helps. You could also macro draw to your main healing and DPS spells. In this pull you'll notice I regen the tank, cleric stance, throw out DOTs, and then single target DPS spells until the tank needs to be healed again. Coincidentally, when you throw out both your DOTs, It'll be just around the time when you can switch back to your normal healing stance. Deciding which buff to use depends on your group and the situation. If you decide to use an enhanced bowl on the tank as well as increasing the card's duration, that's 15% less damage you have to heal and hypothetically 15% more time you can DPS. Many times before a duty, I will keep an Ur card. Hell, just in case. It might also be idea to hold a balance card. In regards to the arrow and balance cards, I would say that using them for DPS depends on the situation. For example, I know that summoners rely heavily on DOTs. If I use a balance card on them, and they finish their DOT rotation 3 seconds before the buff wears off, the DOTs they place on the enemy will still have the damage buff until they wear off. The spear card is useful for anyone. It basically reduces the cooldown timer. You or Inspire card should be played as needed. Now that the TP bar is visible, we can see who needs TP and which bards aren't using AoE rotations. Ha ha ha. Ewer card is important in harder duties since rezzing an ally costs a ton of mana. Using Collective Unconscious, Light Speed, and Synergy should be timed for when they are optimal. Since this fight is pretty much systematic, I save Synergy and Lightspeed for the very end when I know both tanks are going to be taking heavy damage, as well as me getting aggro. One last thing to mention about this fight is that I'm bone dry on mana at the end. That's where the Ewer card could come into play. This clip from earlier shows a pretty good time to use Collective Unconscious. The whole group is getting the regen effect in this. This next clip shows an okay place to use it, but probably not the best. I would say at the very end of this phase is where you should use it. Yeah, so right here would probably be the best place to use Collective Unconscious, right after a normal Helios. I want to talk about two run and gun spells. Respected Benefit, you can be moving, you don't need to stay still, and you can instant cast a heal. The initial heal's not super strong, but it's good enough so that you can get out of the way of something. The other one is your proc Benefit, which gives you a Benefit 2 instant cast. You still have to spend all the mana on it, but you can run and gun this heal. 
Now we're going to talk about the main changes up to 3.07. All cards have changed except for the Spear. The Ewer and Spire card now refresh mana or TP instead of reducing the cost. This is good for the most part, except Dark Knights can no longer use the Ewer card whilst they're coming to the dark side. The Valance, Bowl, and Arrow now have a 30 second duration. Collective Unconscious has changed for the better. This is actually a really good ability now. Collective Unconscious, it gives a barrier for whoever stands inside of it and regen for 15 seconds for whoever enters. The effect stays on the player for the duration no matter if you stop casting or they exit the dome. Sinistry is more useful now as a buff since it increases HP restoration by 20% while giving whoever you linked to 40% of the HP restored from other party members. Shuffle's recast is 60 seconds. This means you can shuffle at least every third draw. Spread can be used out of combat. You can preload a desired card prior to entering a duty as long as you aren't being level synced. You cannot preload a royal road though. Expected Helios has changed as well. Diurnal Aspected Helios has a regen potency of 40 now, and Nocturnal Aspected Helios has 100% HP restored barrier. Aspected Benefic has changed as well. Diurnal Aspected Benefic gives you a 140 regen potency, and Nocturnal Aspected Benefic gives you 250 initial cure potency with 130% HP healed barrier. This makes Nocturnal Sect much better than before. Benefic and Benefic 2 now have a higher cure potency. Benefic 1 has a cure potency of 400, and now Benefic 2 has a cure potency of 650. The last thing I'll mention is Lightspeed. Lightspeed has a reduced MP cost and cast time for 2.5 seconds while reducing attack magic potency. No more healing magic potency reduction. Shorter duration. It's like a 10 second swift cast for normal healing spells. That about wraps it up. Thanks for watching and post any questions down below.